In the worst case of financial mismanagement, since I had to choose whether to get a kebab or get a cab home, the Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs are in all sorts. Now, Will, where is this going to go? It's Des Hasler. He done it manly. He back pays all these players, signs four year deals, and at the end of the at the end of their term, they wrote about nine nine hundred thousand. And he's doing it again at Canterbury. These guys they're in a massive massive mess next year. They've got hardly any hardly any money on the cap, and they're gonna it's gonna take about three or four years to rebuild again. Well, essentially where they're at now, they're saying there's reports come out today saying there's eight hundred thousand dollars left in their cap for next year. They need to sign fourteen more players for the rosters, which means essentially unless they get rid of players, they're not going to be able to field a and, side. And, and they're not going to be, players are not going to leave. You know what I mean? Like they're unless luck, they're they paid. Got, they're lucky they got rid of James Graham because he got a great deal at St George, and they paid half his contract, which is fair enough. And that's not going to happen to most of these players. I mean, like. Greg Eastwood and all these guys, and I'm not hating on any of these players for, for the money that they get. They, get. they deserve everything they get. It's just bad management yeah. from the CEOs to the general managers to the coaches to everyone. So it's just, I mean, a club like Canterbury that I've played there for so many years, one of the most professional clubs I've ever played for, they were never known for this. You know, yeah. it's just such a shame where it's just like, a cup, this, this is what happens when you bring outsiders in that don't really give a shit about the club. All they care about is winning. And that's what Des was like at Manly and that's what Des was like there. He wanted to win straight away. And I know with a club like the Bulldogs, they they want they want to win straight away. So mm. like they give him the free reign to go, do it, do what you want, Des, just get the results. You know, in, in five years he got he got him to two grand finals and, and they made the finals every year. So he was successful, but he left. An awful mess. Well, they talk about a premiership window. They talk about a, an opportunity for a side that's been together for a while. They've got two or three years where that side, the nucleus of that side, can stay together and they potentially win a competition. Now, after 2014, that appears to be where all of these deals got back-ended. You've got the Morris brothers on big deals. You've got players that are probably deserving Cassiano, of that sort of money. Cassiano, Eastwood, like they're all, they're all on big money. Like I'm talking like... Some serious dough here. I mean, like for, for guys that are, you know, I mean the Morris brothers. I think they've been outstanding this year. But I mean, like Greg Eastwood's been in and out of first grade, and he's on, you know, a hell of a lot of money. You know, like but, and as I said, I can't hate on any of these guys for the money that they're getting because they deserve it's not everything. The fault it's not at the all. players' fault. Not at it's all. just the management. And I expect so much more from a club like that who, who, who prides themselves on just just being so professional at all this sort of stuff. You know, and they've obviously learnt their lessons from when. You know, when we got done with the salary cap in 2002 and all these sort of stuff. So they've been very professional ever since Ever since then. So, you know, for them to be in this position again. Interestingly as well, the CEO who was presiding over those deals, and you have to assume that they had knowledge of what was happening. It can't just be Hasler. Raylan Castle is now running the ARU, which is a basket case to start with. So. It's not yeah, it, 100%. It's not Des Hasler's. It's not all on Des. It's on the CEO. 100%. Mm. It's on the chairman. It's on the board. It's on everyone. Mm. You know, it's not just on the coach. The coach just wants the players. He he, he doesn't get whoever he wants, and he does. And you I know, think he, Des Hasler he, probably did. He does get a lot. He does get a lot of pull. But like you know, the CEO has got to sign They're off on off. it. Yeah. And you got to negotiate. You don't negotiate with the coach. Mm. You negotiate with the CEO and mm. the chairman, so they're the ones signing signing off on this and going, "Oh yeah, he's worth eight hundred. He's worth nine hundred. He's worth seven hundred. You know, they they get the gauge off them. Yeah, and you know, it's it's not Des Hasler's fault. He just goes, "Oh look, I want I want I want Kieran Foran. I want I want James Graham. Or I want the Morris brothers. I want to re-sign Clemmer. All these sort of players. Of course, he's going to say that because he, he he likes them players. Yeah, but it's at the end of the day, it's not his. It's not on him." Mm. It's on the CEO, it's on the chairman, and it's on the board. So, realistically, Des Hasler would have wanted the players, but Raylene Castle would have been the one who signed off on it. That's how it goes. I mean, like, I've, I've done negotiations with, with clubs before. And, Every and club. With, with, most, with most of the NRL, and, and it doesn't matter about the head coach. The head coach wants you, but it goes down to the CEO and the chairman. So Raylene Castle has got a lot to answer for, and now she's gone, Des is gone, and then they just disappear and leave, leave the club like the Bulldogs in disarray. Well, what's being lost in this, I think, is Dean Pay has been brought in and he was heralded, it's, you know, it's an insider, it's an ex-Bulldog, he understands the culture. 
What can Ben Pay do? He he's, can't he's sign anyone. He's, he's inherited, inherited all of this. An awful, an awful, not an awful team, but the way it's structured now and the, how they're playing, and it's just, it just seems like a schmozzle at the moment, and they're not playing well, and everything seems to just be amplified by a hundred, especially when you're not winning. They expect to win this club all the time. They, they were expected to make the top eight this year. They probably won't even make the finals, you know, which is going to be another disappointing year. And then next year, as you said, the salary cap, all, all these things is just going to get tighter and tighter and tighter. They're going to have to let some players go. They're going to have to rebuild. But someone, that's is, the thing with letting players go. There's talk that it'll be Clemmer or it'll be Moses yeah, Mumbai. Moses Mumbai. Like someone's, a, someone's got to pay for them. Like the, the, the contract stands with the Bulldogs, which means some club's got to come in and go, you know what, I'm going to pay 400 towards that contract and I'll take your player. Yeah. But if it's not a player that any club wants... They're just going to sit there. Exactly. I mean, like Greg Eastwood is a perfect example. Mm. He ain't moving. I think Why he's on about eight fifty. I mean, like you know, Woodsy and then Kieran Four, and they just signed for some massive, massive coin under through Des, you know, and then he's gone. So they get it, so they're left with them two players, two great players. But at the end of the day, like next like next year, they're on massive money, and if they don't start performing. You know, some other clubs will some other clubs will want them, and then the Bulldogs' faithful will end up turning on them. Yeah, I think, and that's Clemmer's, what, I, and that's what I don't want. I mean, like Clemmer, all these blokes are busting their asses so hard on the field, but they're just not getting results, and it's just gonna it's gonna be amplified by a hundred. It's gonna be awful. Yeah, the makeup of the team needs some work. That's for sure. Yeah. It's that time of year again where New South Wales think that they're going to win State of Origin by picking a new side and are bitterly disappointed once again. William, can they win? This year, I think they can. <laughs> Come on. I just think they've got the right team, they've got the right chemistry, but I just I don't have as much faith as I should because I don't think what is we've the got right halves. Team? What's the right team? Oh, my God. I think we've got a better pack than them. But we just don't have the right halves. And they got Billy Slater. And then, you know, Cameron Smith's retired. You're going to have a McCulloch in there. JT's retired. You're going to have Munster and Ben Hunt. You know, like, you've got these players that just, they just keep going, coming forward. And, like, we have nothing. We just keep regressing. Like, we get, our, we get a grouse forward pack and we, can, and we can always handle their forwards. Greg Inglis is back. You know, Dan Gay guy. Valentine Holmes might miss out. Corey Oates might miss out. Darius Boyd. You've got all these players like Munster, um, Morgan, all these, all these players. As I said, that's half the Australian team. Well, we Will were talking Chambers, about it like, before. And for me, New South Wales halves, right? There's No one's got any idea. Now, like who Brad would you Fittler's pick? Smart. Who would you pick? you got Maloney. Who the hell would you pick otherwise? And I don't know if Maloney's a six or a seven. So, like, it's like... Do you take your, Do you take a gamble? Do you, do you do you go with Peachy? Do you go with Do you try and give this young kid Cleary what one or two games and then throw him into a call? You can't play. Throw him into a cauldron so Queensland can beat the shit out of him. Mm. You know, I think he's going to be an Origin player, but not yet. Mm. Not off he, this year would have been his year if, he if played, he'd yeah, played all if year. He, if, he, if he got about ten or twelve games into him this year, and he was really excelled, and because Pat, because because Penn has been going so good this year. Then he deserves it because I look at him and he's, he's physically big enough. He's got a good kicking game. He tackles well enough. He but he hasn't got that match fitness yet. Even though he is a he's a fit young kid, I just don't think I would throw him in yet. Maybe maybe game two or three, not the first one. For for mine, you look at uh, the, we were talking about it earlier today, and Queensland have lost some of the all time greats. They've lost Cooper Cronk. They've lost Thurston, and now they've lost Cameron Smith. Now, you're putting, as you said before, they've got Hunt, Munster and Morgan to choose from in the Damn, halves. Like Daily Cherry Evans can't in. even get... Like, he can't give, even get a start. Give us Cherry Evans just for origin. So they know who's the makeup of that team, right? Their, now, New South Wales still doesn't know. Their spine has always been great. Their 9, 7, 6 and 1 has always been outstanding. And ours is getting that way, but we still don't have a 7 and 6. Yeah. You know, I, I would have thought Piercy would have been there this year. I, I would still would have picked Piercy and Maloney. I'd have Tedesco at fullback, and I really don't know who I'd pick at nine. Maybe mm. the young kid from St George. I think he's going to have the nod, and you're going to probably pick Cook off the bench. And that's, Do you want and that's two about it. In though? I mean, well, I just think I just think at the end, like they're probably trying to go back to when when we were successful when Craig Wing was coming off the bench, and he was running the ball, you know, straight straight, you know, the last ten or fifteen minutes of each half, he'd come on and just run the ball. 
But that's all good when everything's going good for you. But what Craig, if, what if you? But what if you're on the back foot and Queensland's beating the shit out of you? Yeah. You can't run. And he could play nine, six or seven. Yeah. Whereas these two, they're talking about McInnes and Cook. Both of them are, are, are genuine nines. They're not – I mean, at a pinch you could put them – in the halves, I guess. I would but have Peachy. Could often, I would have Peachy. Yeah, he's a good player. I would have Peachy at six. I'd, I'd leave that combination. And Maloney? At it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maloney and Peachy. Yeah. Because I just don't think um, I don't think anyone else can play with Maloney, with Maloney because, I mean, they play really they play really well together. Peachy can play any position. He's either going to be on the bench or he's going to start. I think he's, I think he's, he's done his time. He's played over 100 games now. He's... he's, he's he is a first grade player, and I think he's ready to make that next step. And hopefully, hopefully he gets rewarded. But you don't know with these selectors. You don't know what Freddie's thinking. You don't know what half the selectors are thinking. But I just don't. I just I cannot see anyone else. No. Like I just unless they throw Cleary in, you know. It's we don't too have. Early. Uh, yeah. I just I just don't understand. I mean, we've got to. That's the only sort of positions that are really up for grabs. This, I mean, obviously, just the six because Maloney's going to have that other half. I I cannot understand how New South Wales are raging favourites. I Honestly, I look at that Queensland side and it's had some key positions. They're paying but $2.50. The board, across the board, they are just I'll put as a dollar good as on ever. It. West Tigers' new cult hero, Mahe Fanua, seems to have a little bit of a problem with his memory. He's forgotten to get the rest of his hair cut and he's <laughs> forgotten to get the training on time. Now, Will, he's been dropped for this week. Is that a fair call? Yeah, it is, you know, um, you can't, you can't, you can't miss training. You can't be an hour late in this day and age. And, and even like, you know, 10, 15 years ago, you can never be late. You can't, it'd be setting the wrong example. You know, you want, West Tigers are going in the right direction with their leadership and everything like that. And you just can't have people just rocking up late. You know, they're trying to change the culture in the joint and, you know, having a, have, having a person just rocking up whenever he wants and he's done it twice you know, he's, he's a great kid. He's had a great year so far. He got man the match last week. So everything was going really good for him. You know, and he's just, he's slipped up. And hopefully he can learn from this and make him obviously a lot more disciplined and take football a lot more serious because it is your full-time job and it's your livelihood. So, mm. you know, it's cost, it's cost him a spot and, and who knows what could happen. Because, well, you know, this young, another young kid could come in there and take his spot for the rest of the year just because yeah. he slept in. So... You know, there's a lot of – the repercussions could be massive. It's interesting too because, I mean, Ivan Cleary to mine has done such a fantastic job. No one expected the West Tigers to be where they are. They got rid of Moses Sully earlier in the year for the same sort of thing turning up and they've set standards. And yeah. obviously the players are buying into those standards. Yeah, well, that's the thing. I mean, like Ivan Cleary has set the standards and they've, they've changed the culture and everything like they're trying to build this whole new culture and you need to buy into it. Everybody needs to buy into it. So – this young kid has just come from Hull, Hull uh, FC last year. He was he come through the Melbourne system, so he should have been a lot more disciplined than that because Melbourne is re very very disciplined. So I was very surprised when I heard that he that he was he missed training twice, not just not just once, and he was an hour late. You know that's just that's just it's sloppy. Mm. You know, and that's I'm, it's not. He, he's done nothing wrong. Yeah. It's I mean he has done something wrong, but he's done nothing horrendous. It's just no. It's, it's just discipline. Discipline. It's discipline, yeah. and he needs to learn. And I think getting dropped from first grade is probably nothing worse. You know, especially because you're indiscretions off the field. You know, if you got dropped for, for bad form, then you'd be more disappointed in yourself, and you go out and you can work on your game. But when it's your fault. Do you think Ivan Cleary would have made this decision if the senior players hadn't backed it? Yeah, I reckon. You know, he wants he wants to set standards and obviously at the start of this year he would have got all the senior players in and they he wanted to build his own culture, start again and he would have, he would have made this decision he would have made this decision regardless, you know. He just probably had to speak to Russell Packer and a few of the other guys, like Madalino, Benji, all these sort of blokes, and just go, look, Mahe's missed training again. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put him in reserve grade, and then that's it. That's all he had to say. And then, and then, the, and then the senior players would have backed him up because you can't have that in your club. You know, he had to make this decision because, like, if he didn't, then like, you start losing faith in your in your own coach if he's not making decisions like that. And then you go, oh, he's making decisions for him, and then he's making decisions for him. It needs to be across one board. So yeah. I'm glad that I'm glad that he made this stance, and you know this is why he's one of the best coaches in the game. 
Hopefully, Mahe Fanua. I mean, I think he's an exciting talent, and you know, I'm sure he's learned his lesson from this, and that'll be the only week he spends in reserve grade. Yeah, I hope so, mate. He's, I mean, he's, he's still a young kid, and he's got a lot to learn. He's been playing some great football. He has become a bit of a cold hero with that hairstyle, but um, you know, hopefully, he does. He does learn from this. I don't. I don't want to see talent like this go to waste just because of his discipline.